Ray, hello my friends. We can see on my Sharp Interactive board, I got the Tiger Paw MPS Influencers Award up, folks. They awarded the top 100 influencers and they put them in order of rank. So number one is the most influential person in the print channel, all the way down to 100. And last year when this list came out, of those of you who remember me, right? I refused the award. Remember that episode? Some people gave me a lot of slack for that. But you know what? A whole lot more people said spot on, Ray, because I had a great argument. My argument to Tiger Paw was you're commoditizing hard work. When you put a list together in order of relevance or importance, that's what this list is. Don't let anybody fool you. You know, number one's number one, number 100's number 100. And in all reality, ladies and gentlemen, you have to have the math behind that. You have to share with people exactly how they're number one, how they're number 40, how they're number 100. Especially if you're so arrogant that you're going to put the list out year after year. And when the list comes out the next year, people are off the list. Or people move around on the list. Wouldn't they want to know why? They were number one and now they're number four. Wouldn't they want to know why they were number 16 and now they're number 80? If they really took influencing as a serious vocation in their life, they would be a little upset about that. They would have pride. They would want to have answers. Ladies and gentlemen, this list that Wes McDonald and, and James Fox all put together is the most disrespectful thing going on in our industry right now. It disrespects all hundred of those people and it disrespects our industry because it's 100%, well, I'm going to call it what it is, nonsense. And you know, I know some of you watching today's episode and you're thinking, Ray, you're just being mean. I'm not being mean. And James Fox all, the president and CEO of Tiger Paw, knew I was going to do today's episode because I told him in June. Well, at the BTA meeting, James came up to me. I didn't look for him. He came up to me and he said, Ray, we're getting ready to reissue the top 100 influencers in the print sector, and you're on the list, and we just want to know, you know, are you going to do another video? Do you want to not be on the list? You know, last time you were kind of, you know, basically you told us to take you off the list. You know what I told James? I said, James, here's the reality. If you put a list together and the list is, in, is based on importance or relevance, in other words, number one's the best and, and number 100 is not the best, then you better put together all the science and, and metrics behind that. And if you don't, I'm going to go get some metrics and science and I'm going to do an episode because I believe what you guys are doing is bullshit. I believe this Tiger Paw list is nothing more than a marketing strategy. And there's nothing wrong with that as a marketing strategy. But don't put it in order of relevance if it's a marketing strategy. If you want to put a list together and say, here's 100 influential people in the print channel and put them all on the list in alphabetical order, you know what? I don't have a problem with that. But you put it in order of relevance. And, you know, I don't know this to be a fact, but I'm going to make a big assumption here and I'm probably right, you know. Because I believe it's in order of relevance, so Wes McDonald can be in the top one to five people, right? He wants to be one of the most influential people in the print channel. Well, boy, I got to tell you something. When I looked at some of his activity on social media, and I'm going to bring that up in a second, he's like one of the worst. And I want to share with you my findings. But I want to ask James Foxall, the CEO of President of Tiger Paw, a very important question before we go on to today's episode. And here's the question, James. If Tiger Paw, PSA tool, and you know, I don't know where you rank in PSA tools, you know, you're not the biggest by far, you know, are you the smallest, are you the medium guy, I mean, but what if you were on a list of the best PSA tool, Tiger Paw, the best PSA tool in the land, and you would be excited about that, you'd plaster that all over your website, wouldn't you, and then what if the next year that list came out and you weren't even on it? Or what if the next year that list came out and you went from number eight, say, to number 40? Would you have enough pride to want to know how you went from number eight to number 40? Would you want to know all the details of that list or do you just not care? Are you just excited to get an award that you could plaster on your website? I want you to think about that question, James. Maybe you put the answer in the comments. Because what you and Wes McDonald did with this list is completely disrespectful to 100 people. And those people on the list... I don't have any qualms with them at all because they didn't have any part of this. At least I hope not. This to me looks like a marketing scam. 
Let's get people on a list. Let's get them so excited they're on the list that they start emailing and posting this stuff all over social media, putting our logo out in the world. You know, James, I talked to you about this once before. If you Google Tiger Paw, the first thing that comes up is ConnectWise. I mean, try it at home yourself, folks. And the bottom line is maybe you should fire your marketing people and start focusing on how you can move up in the rankings other than having your logo plastered all over the place by print people. James Foxall, you, you're the CEO of a PSA tool, and like I said, it's not the biggest one in the land. I'm not even sure what makes you think you even have the right to do this kind of a thing. And you're going to say, well, I just want to be you know, grateful and, and excited to help out the print channel. We have to define the most influential people. Me and Wes McDonald are on a mission. We have to discover these 100 most influential people. James, if you were on a list last year and you moved off that list this year, would you not want to know how that happened? Well, you better tell these people how they moved off the list. You better tell these people how they moved around on the list. Because you know what? There might be some of the folks on that list that probably don't really give a crap. You know, they don't. Hey, they got another plaque they can hang in their den. But you know what? I don't believe that to be the case with all 100 people. As a matter of fact, I think there's a lot of these 100 people that are probably asking the question, how am I even on this list? What's this list all about? And when you have to ask the question of how you're on a list or how you won something, you're usually going to fall victim to those that put you on the list or gave you the prize. Right? We all get it, right? It's a marketing ploy. But James, I'm going to keep my promise. I told you if you put this list out there, I was going to go in there and pull up my own metrics, and that's exactly what I did, and I want to share those with you because I think what you're doing is completely disrespectful to our industry. And I know a lot of you, not a lot of you, I guess, because I'm starting to realize that I have a lot of support out there. But there's some folks that are going to think that, no, Ray, you're the one that's being disrespectful. How dare you do a video and call out James Foxall and Wes McDonald? I mean, they're trying to help our industry by giving out awards to people. How dare you do this? You know, when I was growing up, my parents told me to always tell the truth and never tell people a lie so they like you. Never lie to people so they like you. Always tell the truth. Folks, look, I get it. You know, some of my stuff can be satire. People don't understand satire. They take it personally. Sometimes when I'm telling you the truth, it's painful as hell, especially in an industry that's fallen off a damn cliff. But if you folks continue to fall for this nonsense, you're going to get completely distracted. And you've got to stop getting distracted. you got to stop getting distracted by people that have no accountability to what the hell they're telling you. And that's what drives me the craziest. So let me jump on the Sharp Interactive Board and I want to pull up some things. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to share with you real quick how you win the award. There's no, there's no real science in this, folks. It's just a lot of buzzwords. Let me read them. This is the second year for the compilation of this list, which is based on scoring algorithm that includes multiple measurements, tiger paw tracked, evidence of thought leadership in a variety of venues, social influence, including activity and reach. Social influence, including activity and reach. I'm going to tell you right now, when I looked at Wes McDonald's social media presence, that has to rank low in how you get up in the score because it's almost dismal at best. Let me read a little bit more. Leadership outside people's professional roles. Leadership outside your professional role. It would be really nice sometimes for some of these people to actually define what their professional role is. Are they in the industry? What's their role? Are they a consultant? You know, are they a bartender? What are they doing as their job? Before you can figure out what they're doing outside of that role. Are they in the Kiwanis Club? Is that important to be an influencer in our space? An overall production of industry education and insights. You better be able to educate and have insights. I guess if you have an education platform with some insights and one or two people show up in the classroom, that makes you an influencer. You see, folks, buzzwords. No real teeth in any of it. So how does anybody, how does anybody know how to approve in their influence and, you know, career? How do they know? And if the list is going to come out every year, wouldn't they? They don't want to be falling off the list or dropping down in numbers. Do they? I wouldn't think so. Think about all the salespeople out there. They want to be salesmen of the month, right? And when they're number three all the time, they're meeting with their sales manager and they're coaching and they're saying, man, I got to do better at closing. I got to do more activity. I got to hone my craft. I want to be number one. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I believe our industry has pride. I believe our industry wants to know how to play and they want to know how to win. I believe that there's more people in our industry that really want to win with merit, not win with some nonsense so someone can share their logo all over the damn world. So let me go into this a little bit deeper, folks. And I wanted to pull up the 2021 top 10 and the 2022 top 10. I wanted to share my thoughts on this. In 2021, Andy, you know Andy, right? The guy with the hat, industry analyst guy. Okay, he was number one. Now he's number four. Maybe Andy doesn't care. You know, maybe he really doesn't care. Maybe he does. If I'm Andy, I want to know how the hell did I go from number one to number four? What, what, kind, of, what kind of math do you use over there, Wes McDonald and James Foxwell? How did this happen? Art Post, number two to number five. What I find interesting about Art, Art's heck, the oldest blog out there, right? We know Art Post. Everybody knows Art Post. This last year in 2022, you know, Art put together Better Call Art, his video series. He works his butt off on that, folks. He puts a video out a lot. He's interviewing people. He's working hard for that. He's trying to perfect that craft. It didn't help him at all. It actually hurt him. He kicks off You Better Call Art in 2021. Without it, he's number two and with it. He's down to number five. You see how insulting this is? And this is not me insulting art. So don't try to spin this around, Mr. Wes McDonald and Mr. James Foxall. This is about you putting together a list without any kind of merit or teeth or anything into it, just so everybody can feel good about getting some award. Maybe you think that way. You know, you could have got away with this if you would have just left it alone last year. But now you're putting people in a position to start thinking, why in the hell am I moving around on this list? What am I doing wrong? Unless they don't give a crap. But I assure you, those 100 people, there's a whole lot of people that give a crap. You know, Wes McDonald, he was number four in 2021. Oh, he's number three. Of course he moved up. Of course he moved up. And be honest with you, folks, in 2021, Wes McDonald was not number four. Wes McDonald was under Ray Stashesco. Ray Stashesco said, I don't want any part of that list. And I explained my merits to that. You commoditized hard work, take me off the damn list. And out of respect for me, you want to talk about respect? They never took me off the list, by the way. Anyway, he's number four. Pat McGew, she's number 13. She was number six. So, folks, when you do this, you better have some legs and you better have some information as to why this is happening. Let's go to the 2022 winners. CJ Kanata, number one. You know, if number one was Frank Kanata, I could almost get it. Frank Kanata, I mean, this guy is extremely... Well respected in our industry as an analyst. He's got the Kanata Report. He's doing Fridays with Frank, his YouTube channel, which, by the way, his YouTube channel crushes the one that Wes McCarter does. Just crushes it, by the way. And at the end of the day, he's probably an influencer. CJ Kanata, I think there's people that are asking, how is this possible? And see, if you don't show the math, you don't show the science, you just throw names up there, people should question that. I, if I was Andy, I'd question it. Like I said, maybe these people don't care. Just throw me an accolade, I'm happy. Luella Fernandez is number two, and she's with Quoserca. And you know what? Lorella has a fantastic platform, folks. I have a lot of respect for Lorella, and she's definitely an influence in our space. And her her Quoserca YouTube channel thing, she gets thousands of views. Thousands. And she interviews leaders all over the world in the industry. Extremely well respected. Definitely deserving of the of the two spot. But wouldn't it be nice to know how all that panned out? You know, was it her analyst work that does it? Was it her YouTube series that's doing it? Like I said, the YouTube and the social media thing has to be very, very low in the influencer category, which is kind of kind of nutty since we're in a digital world because Wes McDonald's analytics are terrible. And of course, Wes McDonald, number three, Andy, number four, Art Post, number five, Kate Kingston, number six, and she was number 46. She moved up to number six. And Kate Kingston, you know, she teaches. She's a sales trainer. You would think that she would want to really know, how did I go from 46 to 6? Because then she could teach people how to do that. Mike Stramalio went from 38 to number 7. Mike Stramalio kicks off a podcast this year, right? We all know the podcast, right? The Fake Notch podcast. Come on, Mike. You know me. I had to throw that in there. But I want to share something on Mike's podcast because, again, Mike's podcast is completely crushing the one Wes is doing. And what's interesting about it is, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second because, Mike, I'm going to give you some compliments, so stick, stick around. And Greg Walters, Greg Walters went from 27 to number nine. And, you know, Greg Walters, I mean, I, is he in the industry? Is he out of the industry? He's been out for a while. He hasn't been writing a lot. He started writing and publishing every Friday. And I guess if you publish a blog every Friday, you're going to move from 27 to number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, 
you, 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 our whole industry's got to stop this nonsense. We really do. And we should demand accountability from the people that put us on lists. We should absolutely demand it. And so I want to talk about the podcast, Tiger Paw Radio. After all, Wes McDonald is number three in the whole industry. He's the most influential person, right? He's got 15 followers. I'm not sure how long people stick around when they jump on these podcasts with him, but he could tell you. He's got all the analytics. I wonder if he'll tell you that. Let's look at this. His YouTube channel. You know, Wes Wonders. He's got 1,660 subscribers. And folks, you know, Wes, you can tell me I'm wrong in the comments on this, but I truly believe you bought a whole lot of those subscribers. Because when you started ramping up this Wes Wonders YouTube channel, you went from a few hundred subscribers to 1,660s in a really, really quick time frame, which tells me that you bought the subscribers. Because, you know, I, I guess I could say I'm an expert on YouTube because they actually pay me, so I kind of know how it works. But here's how you can really tell if somebody bought subscribers. Because when you buy subscribers, they're not real people. They're bots most of the time, and they don't watch your stuff. So if you look at Wes Wonders here, he's got 1,660 subscribers, five views, four views, three views, one view, nine view, three views, three views, two views, two. Do I need to go on? Just go to his site and look at it, folks. Look at his site. Look, at the end of the day, he's the one that says he's number three. Now, my good friend, Mr. Scamaglio out there, right? Next week in the life, I call it the Frank Sinatra podcast, 28 subscribers. And here's the reality, folks. In this industry, because it's a very vertical industry, we're talking about print people, right? I mean, come on. Uh, you know, Mike's like me. We're old men on YouTube, and the, the audience is limited, right? It's, it's a vertical channel, and, you know, it takes time to get subscribers. You know, it took me like four years to get up to 1,300 subscribers. It takes a long time to get subscribers. And, but here's the interesting thing. So, Mike, I'm going to give you a compliment here. You know, he's got 38 subscribers, but his last little podcast, he had 27 views. He's got 132 views down here. He's got 83, 26, 26, 16, 184. He's crushing it compared to our friend, you know, Wes McDonald and his, his little podcast thing going on. I'm just saying. Mike, here's what I'll tell you, and I know you probably don't want to take advice from me, but don't buy subscribers. Don't fall for that trap because they'll start sending you emails as you start putting this stuff out there. They're going to want to sell them to you. I'm telling you, they really will. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know... I want to just share this list. This is the 22 list, and I just want to kind of go through something really quick. I was more intrigued by who's not on the list. And I want you all to do your own, your own work on this. I looked at this list. I looked at who came off, and I'm questioning how the hell that person even come off the list. I looked at how people went, you know, and changed places by 20 or 30 people, and I'm like, how the hell does that even happen? But folks, I want you to think about who's not on it, okay? No one from POA, the largest dealer in the country, nobody's on the list. No one from Dex Imaging is on the list. I guess nobody at Dex Imaging is influential. I mean, maybe Dan Sr. ought to cancel his trip going out there to the Great America show in the desert because they're not very influential, according to this list. No one from Perry ProTech. No one from Impact Networking. I'm thinking to myself, Impact, Impact Networking, of course, everybody knows I'm good friends with Impact Networking. But you know what? Reality is this. You know, Frank Kuko opens up a sock center. Tens of millions of dollar investment in this big, huge sock center. The governor of Illinois comes and cuts the ribbon with 15 mayors. He's pretty influential in the space, right? But I guess not in the print space. Nobody wants to hear his stuff. Nobody wants to learn how that business is going to transform. No one looks at all the hundreds and thousands of hours worth of content that Impact puts out there online. It's amazing to me, folks. You know, and here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that Impact Networking, POA, Dex Imaging, Perry ProTech are no way at all candidates for the tiger paw software platform so there's no reason to put them on the list that's just me thinking and when you don't put any teeth into the list that's what people would think no xerox leaders except for one in europe kind of makes sense right let's get some guy in europe put him on the list so he'll spread our logo all over europe and tell people how happy he is he's on this list no lexmark folks there's nobody at lexmark influential anymore i guess no rico folks oh wait a second there is one rico guy but he's on the board of the mpsa i'll get to that in a second but i was thinking the tuesday guy from rico would for surely be on the list you know no clover folks you know I mean, you know what's really funny about the clover so clover jim Sirkleski, the chairman of clover was on the list in 2021 he's not on the list in 2022 i guess he's not influential anymore and no one from connect wise 
No one from ConnectWise, well, ConnectWise would be a competitor of Tiger Paw, obviously, but I can't believe if this is up and up and honest and everything, that there's no thought leadership coming out of ConnectWise to help our industry as it transitions, as it's going through its greatest, you know, disruption in its history. You got to be kidding me. We got Peter out there who took over service leadership, running all over the country, going to all these shows and stuff. He's not influential to our space. Are you kidding me? Folks, I think that's a questionable at best. No one for me automate. You know, last year Larissa was on the list. This year she's not on the list. I guess Larissa's not influential anymore. You know? I mean, you know, the only reason they put e-automate on that list last year, I'm I convinced of it. So that they could tell everybody that, oh no, we have competitors on the list. So it's it's up and up. I mean, we'd never put a competitor on there. Of course, I think it's ridiculous that Tiger Paw would think that ECI is one of their competitors. Because I believe Tiger Paw to be a pretty small PSA tool, right? In comparison to like ECI Automate, in comparison to ConnectWise. I mean, they're, they're the little one out there, right? And so, folks, I think this is important. Because if you're going to put a list together that shares it by relevance, you better sure as hell have some backup behind that. Especially if you're going to do it every single year. Because what you just did, Wes McDonald, and what you just did, James Foxhall, is completely disrespect 100 people. And you disrespected our industry because you believe that everybody wants a false accolade to make them feel good. And I want to wrap it up with one more thing. And, and folks, where's that at right here? MPSA. Remember when I influenced the MPSA to clean up their website because Wes McDonald, their president, had the wrong job description? They cleaned it up. Let me read it, what it is. Wes McDonald is chief noisemaker, Tiger Paw Software. Chief noisemaker. Now do you realize what this list is all about? It's about making noise for Tiger Paw. He probably banked on the fact that I would critique this, you know, because obviously I'll, I'll get the message out there. But uh, folks, this isn't a message to praise Tiger Paw. This isn't a message to praise Wes McDonald, because I believe those two gentlemen completely disrespected our entire industry you know what when we believe respect is telling us what we want to hear to make us feel good when we believe respect is lying to people so they like you guess what that's not respect that's absolute disrespect and folks i want to ask wes mcdonald a question so we have one two three four five six seven people that sit on the mpsa board or executive committee that are on the list this year seven of them is that a coincidence? Ladies and gentlemen, please stop chasing these false accolades. When you see this stuff, call it out. You know what? It's not kindergarten. We don't need people to lie to us so we like them. We need people to tell us the truth so we could get better. Because everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer. If all it will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and 